Redemption. Welcome back to Street Scores. It's your boy Rico giving you the 2018 Week 3 Review Edition of Redskins Report. I've reached 1,000 subscribers. I'm going to put out my 1K subscribers video soon. Still subscribe, please, if you have it, and also drop a like or dislike. If you rock with this video the long way or the wrong way, let me know. But it's time to get to this analysis. Let's get it. We redeemed ourselves. We beat the Packers 31-17 to at FedEx Field. We are now 2-1 on the season. And we are now 15-18-1 against Packers all-time in regular season game. But y'all already know I'm about to hit y'all with these stats this entire episode. Same thing every time. But now it's time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Starting with the offense who converted 5 of its 11 third downs. And speaking of offense, after week 3, our offense is now 4th in the NFL in average time of possession with 33 minutes 31 seconds per game. 3rd in the NFL in rushing plays of 10 or more yards with 13. 4th in the NFL in rushing yards per game with 137.7. And 1st in the NFL in first downs drawn by penalty with 7. Now to the quarterback. Alex Smith completed 12 of his 20 passes for 220 yards and 2 touchdowns and 1 interception. That was Jordan Reed's fault for a nice 110.4 passer rating. This was a bounce back game for Alex Smith and a breakout game for him in terms of throwing the deep ball for the Redskins. He played in all of offense's 61 snaps. He gained 22 yards on five of his nine kneel down rushes and picked up a first down on three of them. And all of them were on third down, so it's nice to see him out there using his legs to not only extend plays, but to extend drives, just like Jay Gruden wanted him to do. And throwing wise, even though he didn't throw it a lot, when he did, it either drew a defensive penalty, went through a tight window on good coverage, or went deep for a big play. Great game for Alex Smith. He finally threw the deep ball. Paul Richardson was finally utilized. Alex Smith was third of week three quarterbacks and adjusted yards per attempt with 10.75. He can throw the deep ball, y'all. They said he couldn't, even though stats proved otherwise last year. And also, Alex Smith went six for seven for 149 yards on play action passes which is 21.3 yards per attempt. And both of his touchdowns were scored off of those play action passes, along with his only interception. So Alex Smith is undoubtedly proven to be more effective once our run game is potent enough to make play action effective. Overall, great bounce back game from Alex Smith, but he did have a lot of help, starting with his offensive line. Big bounce back game from them also. Alex Smith was not sacked, and that's the first time he hasn't been sacked since week 16 of 2016. He was only pressured on nine of his 24 dropbacks, which is a 37.5 pressure rate. The O-line also created lanes for a 148 rushing yard day. 5.1 yards per carry. I'm very impressed with the Tony Bergstrom and Chase Willie A pair in the interior. Let's get into each individual lineman going from left to right. Trent Williams played on all 61 offensive snaps and had a great game, which is expected of him. He didn't allow a single pressure and didn't get a penalty this time. This is his first game all season without a penalty. He looked like the Trent Williams I used to know, great in both pass pro and run block. Pro Football Focus gave him the highest grade on our offense for week three with a 78.6. Second year Chase Roulier, who moved from center to left guard in place of the injured Sean Laval, played in all of 61 of the offensive snaps. This was his first time playing left guard in the NFL, and he played pretty well. Wasn't great, wasn't bad. He allowed two hurries and was decent at run blocking. Pro Football Focus gave him a very low grade of 40, but I disagree with that. He looked pretty good out there to me. Not great, but good. Tony Bergstrom started at center since Rulier moved to guard, and he also played all 61 offensive snaps. He played pretty well also. Similar game to Chase Rulier. He also allowed two hurries and had a pretty good day on run blocking. Brandon Sheriff played in all 61 snaps and didn't have a good day overall. He played well in run blocking, but he struggled in pass pro. He allowed a team high three pressures and Alex Smith's only QB hit. But he was still hurt from the Colts game, so that explains a lot. Ty Naseki replaced the injured Morgan Moses for 45 snaps and had a bad day. He only didn't allow a QB pressure because the Clay Matthews sack was called back on that controversial call. He also committed a game-high three accepted penalties for 20 total yards. He alone committed half of the Redskins' accepted penalties in the entire game. Just a bad day overall in both run blocking and pass blocking. He showed why he doesn't start. 
Morgan Moses left the game after 16 snaps with a concussion and allowed a QB hurry before exiting. Before exiting. Casey Dunn only played special teams. Jerron Christian was inactive again, but I can't wait for him to become NFL ready because Ty Naseki doesn't start for a reason. He is not it. And Sean Laval was inactive with his injury. Now on to the running backs. Adrian Peterson played 32 snaps. He had his best game on the ground since 2015. He gained 120 rushing yards on 19 rushes, which is 6.32 yards per carry. In those 19 rushes, he also gained six first downs, two touchdowns, avoided six tackles, and had 81 yards after contact. Four of his rushes went for 10 or more yards. He only lost yardage on one of his runs. He had a great game on the ground. He had vision, patience, balance through contact, ball security, explosive cuts, everything we needed from him in the run game. He was never targeted in the passing game, but the Redskins didn't need to. He was doing so much damage on the ground, he wasn't needed in the air. Chris Thompson only played in 25 snaps. He had a bad game, statistically. Not necessarily his fault. Seemed like the Packers preferred to stop CT and worry about Jordan Reed, Vernon Davis, and the receivers later. CT only gained 17 yards on the six rushes. Only one of his rushes went for more than three yards. Even worse, CT was only targeted twice with one catch and zero total yards. This was the first time since week 14 of 2016 that CT didn't gain positive receiving yards in a game. The Capri Bibbs only played in six snaps. He rushed for three yards on two carries. Ryan Anderson came in at fullback for both of Adrian Peterson's rushing touchdowns at the goal line. The Redskins have now scored touchdowns on all of Ryan Anderson's fullback snaps. Crazy. And Samaj P. Ryan was inactive. Now to the tight ends. Jordan Reed played in 40 snaps. He had a good game. Even when he isn't being targeted, he is a big distraction for the defense. But Jordan Reed led the team in targets with seven and caught a tied team high four receptions for 65 yards. He also gained two first downs. His biggest play was on third down when the Redskins were at their own six yard line and he had a 34-yard reception in the middle of the field right behind the linebackers. Huge play. His blocking wasn't great, of course, and he also had a bad play where he gave up on a route, allowed himself to be bullied by the corner, and caused Alex Smith's only interception of the season. It was completely Jordan Reed's fault, but overall, it was a great game from Jordan Reed. 34-year-old Vernon Davis played in 37 snaps. He had a great game receiving. He caught both of his targets for a team-high 70 receiving yards and two first downs. Vernon Davis's 50-yard reception off of a wheel route is the Redskins' second longest play of the season. He also led the team with 42 yards after the catch. But he also committed a 15-yard taunting penalty and a 10-yard holding penalty. Second year, Jeremy Sprinkle played in 24 snaps due to our large lead leading to more running plays. He is our best run blocker, so his increased snap count isn't a coincidence. He was a non-factor in the passing game, and his blocking wasn't as good as I expected, but it wasn't bad. He just got moved around quite a bit but it wasn't bad enough to bring down the entire operation. The wide receivers finally blossomed. Josh Doxson led all of the wide receivers with 47 snaps. He led the receiver group in snaps and routes ran, and yet he was only targeted three times and didn't catch any of them. He just hasn't had a productive stat game yet. But at least against the Packers, he drew multiple pass interference calls. One of them easily could have been a catch if the corner didn't interfere so bad, and the other one could have been a touchdown catch, and it led to an Adrian Peterson touchdown. And another Doxson target was slightly overthrown out of bounds. Doxson caught the pass but came down out of bounds, but his main problem is his inability to separate, so a lot of his problems are his fault. Paul Richardson played in 45 snaps and finally had his breakout game as a Redskin. He didn't have a lot of catches at all. He was only targeted twice and only caught one of them, but it was a huge play. A 46-yard touchdown bomb that set the tone for the rest of the game. From that play on, we gained the lead and never let go. And a crazy stat? That was the first touchdown by a Redskins wide receiver this season. And even though Richardson only had one catch after that touchdown, the defense had to play back to honor Richardson's speed and Alex Smith's arm. Paul Richardson leads all of the Redskins receivers in receiving yards with 131 and first downs with five. Jamison Crowder played in 37 snaps. Bounce back game from him too. He caught all four of his targets for 39 yards, two first downs, and a touchdown. His first of the year. He looked quick out there against the Packers. We might have our slot receiver back. Maurice Harris played in nine snaps, but was a run blocker on all of them. Brian Quick only played in one snap and didn't do anything noteworthy. And Michael Floyd was inactive again. Overall, the offense was very effective. A big bounce back game. We needed this one. After this game, I know the Redskins are more so that team that played week one than week two. The offense just may be a little inconsistent. We need receivers to separate 
Alex Smith to throw deep and use his legs when necessary, offensive line to be as dominant as we expect, and Jordan Reed and CT to stay healthy. The offense had a total of 18 first downs, 386 yards, one turnover, four touchdowns, and a 29 minutes and five seconds time of possession. Our time of possession was lost due to the Packers playing a lot of catch up though. They ran 11 more plays than us. We had very quick and efficient scoring drives. The offense played well, but the defense also had a great bounce back day. So let's get to them. Overall, the defense played well. The Redskins allowed the Packers to score one touchdown on their two red zone trips. They allowed 100 rushing yards, no rushing touchdowns, and seven rushing first downs. They also allowed 240 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, and 11 passing first downs. They also only allowed six of the Packers' 14 third downs to be converted. The defensive pass rush pressured Aaron Rodgers on 18 of his dropbacks. He only completed four of his 13 passes for 54 yards when pressured. The defense only allowed Aaron Rodgers to throw for 6.02 yards per attempt, which is his worst average since week seven of 2016. Also, after this game, the Redskins defense is second in the NFL in points per game allowed with 14.7, second in the NFL in yards allowed per game with 278 second in the nfl and passing yards allowed per play with 4.8 and tied for first in the nfl and fourth down percentage allowed still at zero percent now let's talk about the trenches rookie deron Payne bounced back from his non-existent day against the colts he played a career high 64 snaps he also had a career high solo tackles with four total tackles with five and qb pressures with four one of his pressures was a sack where he showed his underrated awareness quickness hands, and footwork after he caught a Packers offensive lineman lunging and took advantage of it. Great move, good game. Second year, Alabama Jonathan Allen also played a career high in snaps with 65 and had a career high and game high five QB pressures. One of them was a QB hit and another with two sacks, a game high and a career best. Great game. He also had three solo tackles. Matt Ioannidis only played in 18 snaps. I'm not sure why the Alabama brothers each played in at least 92% of the snaps, with the third highest snaps coming from Ioannidis with only 26%, especially with how dominant he is when he's in the game. He was our most efficient defensive lineman. With only being in 26% of the snaps, he managed to get a game high, five QB pressures, and only 14 pass rushing snaps. One of those pressures was in the form of a crazy sack where he just bull rushed a Packers offensive lineman into Aaron Rodgers and pretty much tackled both of them at the same time. Ioannidis leads the team in pressures with 12, even though he's had at least 30 fewer pass rush snaps than Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. He's seventh in the NFL out of all interior defensive linemen in pressures, even though he's 57th in number of pass rushes. He leads all NFL interior linemen in pass rushing productivity with a score of 14.4, which would have led the league in each of the past three seasons. He may not be better against the run than the Alabama pair, but he is without a doubt better at pass rushing. He's statistically the best in the league. Ziggy Hood and rookie Tim Settle only played on special teams. In the beast waiting to be unleashed, Caleb Brantley was inactive once again, which is weird, especially since they released Anthony Lanier to create a spot for him. And Anthony Lanier played in 11 games last year. Now to these outside linebackers. They weren't great, but they bounced back from their game against the Colts. Ryan Kerrigan played in 57 snaps, which is the most in the game so far for this season for him. But that still doesn't result in a sack or a QB hit. He did finally get his first solo tackle of the season though, and he also had three QB pressures. And even though he didn't have a good game statistically, he was out there forcing holding penalties left and right. They need to stop hating on my boy. They prefer to take holding penalties than to let my boy Ryan Kerrigan be great. Preston Smith played in 62 snaps and had a similar story. Three QB pressures, a QB hit, and forced a holding penalty. Preston Smith did have a career high six solo tackles, and seven total tackles though. But they need to stop holding these outside linebackers and let them shine. Pernell McPhee played in 14 snaps and recorded two QB hurry. He has been very efficient. Through 40 snaps with the Redskins, he has eight pressures. He only has 17 QB pressures through 385 snaps with the Bears last year. I believe he deserves more playing time. Ryan Anderson only played in five defensive snaps and made the most of it with two QB hurries and an assisted tackle, but his biggest impact was at fullback for the two Adrian Peterson touchdown runs. But on to the off-ball linebacker group. They had a pretty good day overall again. Mason Foster played in 69 snaps and played well in run stopping and did better than expected in the passing game. For the third straight week, he led the team in total tackles with 10. He is eighth in the league in total tackles with 27 total. He also had a QB hurry and he only allowed three of his five targets to be caught for 30 yards and two first downs. Sounds kind of bad, 
but he was in coverage for 43 snaps, so it was actually pretty good. Zach Brown played in 50 snaps, which is still low from him, just like the trend has been so far this year. He recorded three solo tackles and three assisted tackles, and he led the team in defensive stops with four. All six of his tackles gained five or fewer yards and didn't result in a single first down. And in coverage, he wasn't bad. He allowed all three of his targets to be caught, but they only went for 12 total yards and no first downs. Josh Harvey Clemens played in 19 snaps, with 15 of them coming in coverage, of course. He replaces Zach Brown on obvious his passing downs. He had a good game. He only allowed one reception on four targets for five yards and no first downs. He also had an assisted tackle with Deron Payne. And then Zach Vigil and Sean Deion Hamilton only played on special teams. Now the cornerbacks. They had a decent day overall. Josh Norman played in all 69 defensive snaps. He had a pretty good day overall. Not a great enough day for the league's highest paid corner, but a pretty good day. He was struggling with an illness and a hamstring injury, and yet he did not miss a defensive snap. He gave up four receptions on six targets for 37 yards and three first downs. This was a decent game, and at least he hasn't given up a touchdown all year. He also had seven total tackles with two of them being solo, but he missed the tackle, and his biggest play was his fumble recovery after Fabian Moreau ripped the ball away from Randall Cobb. Quinn Dunbar played in all but one defensive snap, and had a second straight off week. He covered the Packers' number one receiver, Devontae Adams, for most of the game and struggled. Devontae had four receptions on four targets for 40 yards, two first downs, and a touchdown against Dunbar. Devontae also forced a 21-yard pass in the against Dunbar, but Dunbar did tie a career high in solo tackles with six, and three of them came on Devontae Adams' receptions that he allowed. Fabian Moreau played in a career-high 58 snaps and had a big bounce-back game. He only allowed three receptions on a game-high eight targets for only 14 yards and one first down. Great day in coverage. He also had a career high in both solo tackles with three and total tackles with four. But his biggest impact was that strip fumble he caused on Randall Cobb that was recovered by Josh Norman and basically sealed the win against Green Bay. Rookie Greg Stroman only played in one defensive snap and was the primary return man. Danny Johnson only played on special teams and Adonis Alexander was inactive again. Now the safeties. They had a pretty off day overall. DJ Swearinger played in all of the Redskins 69 defensive snaps and he allowed three of four receptions to be caught for a game high 67 yards including the biggest play allowed by the Redskins all season, a 64-yard touchdown bomb to Geronimo Allison. He failed to pick up the receiver after Josh Norman passed him off, but DJ did have a pass defense that almost turned into an interception, but he only had one solo and one assisted tackle, which is also an off day for him. Meanwhile, second-year Monte Nicholson, who also played in all 69 defensive snaps, was targeted four times and allowed four receptions for 43 yards and two first downs. And even though he had a career-high eight tackles, he also had a game-high and career-high five missed tackles, which is crazy. It was a struggle out there for him on Sunday. Thankfully, he had teammates to clean up for him. Deshazia Everett played in two defensive snaps and didn't do anything noteworthy. Ricky Troyapke is still hurt from a hamstring injury, so he did not play. And Kenny Ladler only played on special teams again. Overall, the defense played well. The defensive line played very well. It was weird to see the Alabama duo get 129 of the 147 defensive linemen snaps. Ioannidis was the only other defensive lineman to get any playing time, but it worked out. The linebackers played pretty well overall. The cornerbacks didn't have much of a bounce back from week two except for Fabian Moreau. And the safeties played their worst games of the season. Missed tackles, missed coverages. Can't have that next week against the Saints. Now Dustin Hopkins, he made his only field goal from 35 yards. He made all four of his extra points. Also, five of Dustin Hopkins' kickoffs landed in the back of the end zones for touchbacks. And the other one was only returned to the 24-yard line. Nothing major. Tress Way had a good day. He had five punts with an average of 47 yards per punt. But that's just him doing what he does. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for the view. Great win. One word to describe it, redemption. The offense had a very explosive day. Our strength, the offensive line, bounced back. The receivers finally flashed. Alex Smith threw the deep ball and used his legs. The defense caused a hobble Aaron Rodgers to have one of his worst games since 2016. How do y'all feel about this explosive win against the Packers? Do y'all feel the Redskins can play like this consistently? Who was your favorite player on Sunday? Who was your most disappointing player on Sunday? Let me know in the comments. Be heard. And while y'all at it, make sure y'all don't let Mike fake punch that like button, favorite, subscribe. I'll subscribe back and most importantly comment and share and again thank y'all for the support i'll catch y'all later i'm bringing y'all a 1k subscribers video and i'm also bringing y'all a game preview against the saints i'm out